So we're only 10 days into 2021, but it's already been a very, very long year. Welcome back to Last Words presented by The Pit. I'm one of your co-hosts, Doc Coyle from the band Bad Wolves and host of the X-Men podcast. I'm Katie Irizarry of Season of Mist, Loudwire, and now Outburn Magazine. And we're bringing back one of our co-hosts from the beginning of the show, Ms. Zena Coda. Yeah, beef. what's up? I'm back. Two of my oldest friends um, here on this podcast. So for everybody who doesn't know who I am, my name is Zena Coda. I'm an OG metal personality. Remember when people actually used to host things on TV? <laughs> I hosted a show on Sirius that sounds like wood metal for many years. I'll do a host gig every now and then and also host a podcast called Everything's Political. So now that I'm reunited with you fools, Doc, Katie, what have you guys been up to on this podcast? We've been arguing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I feedback shamed many bands and I shamed bands for being on band camp, which I I reject and denounce myself Ooh. For, for, for being the, uh, the mainstream metal guru over here on Last Words. And uh, shout out to Jordan, who is no longer with us, but you know we we love you, Jordan. We'll, we'll see you soon. But now, see, I like it, because now I'm outnumbered by the ladies, and I'm gonna be on <laughs> even more on defense than I was previously, because I was like, you know, they were like the cool kids listening to, de you know, Death Heaven in battle vests. And now I'm just outnumbered from a gender standpoint. So I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah, man. Uh, I really enjoyed having Jordan on the show. By the way, I feel like Doc made it sound like he's dead. He's not. No. He's, he's, like, he's no longer with us. He only no, wears uh, corpse paint. <laughs> he's full-time Garcenio now, all right? I definitely want to shout out Jordan. I had a great time with him on the show. It was so much fun. And I I hate hanging out and talking to people I, I agree with all the time. Me and him were buttheads, but that's when I have the most fun. I think one thing is for sure, though, the three of us are Deftone stands. Oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. Well, as having the unfortunate title here of being the resident Iced Earth fan, I think it's appropriate we just get right into it. If you don't know what's gone on, you've been living under a rock, I don't know, maybe you're blessed enough not to be on social media. John Schaefer, uh, one of the founding members and guitar player of Iced Earth, was a part of the crowds that stormed the Capitol building last week. So this has obviously made major news. And I mean, outside of the sphere of metal, this has hit every mainstream regular website you can imagine. One might call it a PR crisis, but is this a metal crisis? I think is the question. I, I don't really see it that way. I mean, John Schaefer is an individual. He does not represent the metal community as a whole. Yeah, and one thing I could say, you're not the only resident Iced Earth fan. I love Iced Earth. I'm former <laughs> uh, label mates with Iced Earth and it's a weird thing because I, I think when I heard about it, it didn't really hit me too hard because there's the thing. I mean, sick riffs have no political connotation. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think I have a, a relative ability to kind of separate the art from the artist. As far as I know, I mean, has he been someone who's been very like outspoken about these things or is it just something he's been doing kind of? Yeah, well, I mean, the content of the songs, too. Like, just think about, you know, well, the American yeah. pride in their songs. Like, some, it's, it's not a shocker, you know? Some of their songs. I feel like they have a lot of fantasy elements more so to their albums. They definitely lean more in that, like, almost power metal lyrical direction. Yeah. But it does have a lot of political albums. Like, I mean, the man wrote The Glorious Bur Burden. Like, he thinks it's 1774. Of course he was out there. Like, that's and he has been outspoken about a lot of these things in interviews and so it's not shocking. To me, I'd be shocked if they were like Tom Morello and Dee Snyder were there. I'd be like, wait, who, what? I think this is super on brand, right? Like I, I was telling Katie before, uh, you know, earlier we were texting and I was like, this man is Tampa, Florida, brought to life <laughs> and a human being. I think this is a true tragedy is the fact that like his whole career now, to some, not all, because think about a lot of the fans, not a lot, but probably some of the fans that, you know, are kind of like, super into the band might ha might really identify with some of that American pride and that historical pride, right? Like imagine yourself a soldier at Valley Forge, like right, Katie, like it's like, a, it's like fantasy role play for American like pride, right? Like, so I'm not, I'm honestly personally not surprised. I just think that it sucks that his reputation is now shrouded in, in this like really egregious, hateful thing that they pulled off that will like remain a stain on American history. The same history 
that they spent all this time loving, right? So it's kind of ironic in some ways. I don't think it's the band's score. I think that that's the unfortunate thing. It's not that it's his, his score. He knew what he was doing. Again, he's an individual. He acted how he acted. These are his consequences. What I feel bad for is it's the band and the label sure. and, and the fans even who now get blamed like, oh, you must be a part of the problem then. It's like, you know, when I got into I Start, I was 13 years old. Do you think I cared about politics? Like, and someone was just like, hey, you like Iron Maiden? You might like this band. And that's all I heard was a band that had an amazing singer that sounded like Iron Maiden. Well, I, I think one one thing that this whole situation makes me think about is just the idea of radicalization or extremism that we live in now. Another interesting relation to Iced Earth is their former singer, Matt Barlow, quit the band to become a police officer after 9-11. And it kind of makes this through line between John Schaefer because I think it shows that for some people, there's other things for them that become more important than music or more important than having a career in music. Obviously, wherever he got to that point, he felt the need to be on the front lines and be an activist and act. And I, I, I wonder if there was some country musician out there or some maybe a different genre of music, if, if it would be as much of a story so when there are artists that are outside of, you know, just the metal genre, I just think in general, like anybody of note that attended, especially because they're going on a manhunt for everybody who was basically like inciting this violence, it was there. What I'm really interested actually in Zach, like, and you know this because you've been in bands with controversy uh, over the years for sure. And you can answer this or not answer this. Is, is how do you, how do the other band members handle that? Like what Katie was saying, like it sucks to have those kind of things kind of be a scar on your reputation. And I, I'm, I'm sympathetic because I think it's, it takes a really strong bond between the band members to really kind of, you know, move forward and, and band together to be strong. Yeah, I mean, just to kind of address that, a lot of the stories that we do with on the show hit me differently because I'm a musician and I can, I have to relate to this stuff in a totally different way. And my band is making a ton of news right now because we split with our singer and a lot of people are blaming us and saying, oh, we fired him because of politics, which is, I'm not, I'm literally not even legally a member of the band. I can't fire anyone. So it's kind of hilarious anyway. But just as a human being, I have my political ideas, but I think we should be able to coexist and think differently and have different opinions and not make that the central theme of why we're in a band, unless you're in a political band like Rage Against the Machine where it's about that. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain point where it overshadows the music and it goes so far where this is something where, like I said, this is, if he was thinking about his musical career, he wouldn't have been there. Right. That totally. action was more important than I got to make a new album. And listen, and I wonder if it was, if we found out someone from like fever three, three, three was taking over one of those government buildings in Portland or something, would we feel the same way? Would we identify more with their cause more? I don't know. I think once the point you get to violence, once the point you get to destroying property, invading uh, space, I think I'm just not with you because I don't think that's how you win. If you, you know, that's not how you convince people. Yeah, it, it seems like you're on another thing. That is extremism to me. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's something I've, I've dealt with, but I want to be able to exist even with people I disagree with and may not make politics the main thing. And if that's how much, you, if you're that invested in it, where you're w willing to go there, then it's beyond music, you know? And I don't personally think this is like a stain on metal heads because I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a predominantly metal thing. And, and it, as a community, I think it's been more repudiated than anything. That's who I feel the real victims are. The band, sure. the label. He's not really a victim. He did what he did. He faces whatever consequences he faces. That's his problem. It just sucks that other people now have to face those consequences. So that was this week on Last Words presented by The Pit. You can find us here every Thursday. You can find me on social media at Doc Coyle, Twitter and Instagram. Katie, where can the people find you? You can find me, Twitter and Instagram at Merciful Kate. What about you, Zena? Google it. <laughs> oh. At Zena Coda everywhere. Two E's. If you want more of this episode, check out our raw, unedited version on all podcast platforms. You could find us at The Pit Presents Last Words. 
And you can find us at We Are The Pit on Twitter and Instagram. And please hit us up, drop us a message if you have any hot takes on who's going to be involved in the next insurrection. Mm-hmm.